I build these bloody roads? Relax. Will ya? It's a shortcut. Mary, Therese. How are ya? Good. <laughs> Jump in. Are you going to Canberra? Going that way. Oh, thank you so much. No worries. <laughs> ah, it's a bloody terrible world, though, isn't it? You know. People dying in wars, people dying of starvation all over the world. Terrible. Jeez, mate. Lighten up. So, um, what are you doing in Aubrey? I'm, um, going to shoot with my brother. Thanks again for driving us to Canberra. We were waiting for ages. Yeah, no worries. Have a piece. Mary, I think he's gonna get a gun. It's okay. All right, girls. Who wants to do me first? You could be joking, right? I'm not joking. Come on, come here. Hey, settle down. Relax, we are relax. Come on. Oh, shit. sexual assault. He's known to frequent the Bangalore Forest and he owns a Ruger 22. He's currently serving time for armed robbery, but was not in jail at the time of the murders. Let's talk to his cellmate, find out what stories he's got to tell. No, no, absolutely not. Not until we get more evidence. We don't want to alert him to our line of inquiry. That goes the same for all our persons of interest, all 150. We'll keep our distance, all right? How are we going on that Malat file? Uh, we have the work records back for Richard and Ivan Malat. Now, it turns out Richard was working on most of the key dates, but not Ivan. He was off everyone. He was also working on a road gang around Galston. And the same time that Gibson boy's backpack was found, I mean, he could have stashed that there, run us off the scent, keep us away from Belangelo. What's Ivan's for? Oh, nothing that stands out. Just a bit of petty crime as a no, kid. No, that doesn't sound right. Not from what I've heard about that family. The profile, I reckon, is there a fit. Now, who, who did the background on this? Gordon. Right, we'll get him to go back and do it again. Who's next on our list? Bruce Pryor. The bloke who found the skull. Yeah. We still haven't eliminated him. I'll right, get Gordon to do it and get him to do it properly. I'll do it. Thanks, Royce. Boss, boss wants you to go back and check Ivan's criminal history. Why? 
What did he say? He wants to know you got it right. Of course I got it right. And we also need you to go and re-interview Bruce Pryor. Ah, oh, come on, Royce. You know nobody thinks that Pryor did it's it. It's about the due diligence in every league. You know that. I thought we were going off the idea that the killer was a local. Now, all the victims, they were heading south from Sydney. Why is that, Royce? Because our guy lives in or near the Liverpool area. That's why. I'm not going to argue your logic. A potter needs to be interviewed. Right. So I go out there and find us a best lead, and you want me out there ticking boxes? Are you with us, Paul? Tick. Bruce? Bruce Pryor? Yeah. I'm Detective Senior Constable Paul Gordon. This is my colleague, Detective Senior Constable Mark Kemazuli. Go inside, love. What's this about? You pick up hitchhikers, Bruce. No, what are you saying? Is there something that you want to tell us? Like what? Like why you're wandering around on that particular fire trail. I just hadn't looked at it before and I was kind of drawn to it. Okay, drawn to it. What do you mean? Well, I thought I might find something there and so I went for a walk, that's all. Look, I've got to ask you, Bruce, are you in any way responsible for the death of Deborah Everett? What? No. Are you responsible for the death of James Gibson? No, I was just trying to help. I've got two daughters. Do you think I could do something like that? Where are we going now? While we're here, I want to check the crime scene. One or two killers. Does Ivan smoke? I don't know. I'll go ask him, shall I? Now, there were cigarette butts found at the Clark and Walters scene right by the shell casings. If the boy was a big guy, it wouldn't have been easy to deal with. Not if you're dealing with Anya. If someone else was with you. I'm such an idiot. Well, what's happened now? When I first checked the microfish, I didn't check all of Ivan's records. Wait, 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 just back up, back up. See, Ivan was charged for rape at the Supreme Court in 1971. Here we go. You're gonna love this. Picked him up hitchhiking from Liverpool to Melbourne. You're bullshitting. It says hitchhiking? It's no bullshit. Come on. Their names are Greta and Margaret. He picked us up on our way from Liverpool. We were hitchhiking to Melbourne. The driver said he was going to Canberra. We said the Canberra turn-off would be fine. Had a bit of a doze. Woke up in the car. We say... Where are we? What are you doing? What are we doing? He says, I'm going to have sex with both of you. If you don't, I'm going to kill you. Try to make a run for it. You're gonna rape us. And he says, yeah, you could call it that. And then pulls a knife. And then two lengths of pink nylon cord. You're right, Paul. It's Ivan Malone. It's all there. What he said, how they got away, his arrest, how he absconded from bail. He was found not guilty. Malat's solicitor ripped into the girl on the stand. By the time he was done with her, she couldn't say for certain if the sex wasn't consensual. The fact that he was never convicted doesn't help our case. A uh, good defence counsel would use it against us. With all due respect, I think the main point here is that he pulled a knife on them, he tied them up with a cord, just like with Everest, Clark and Walters. It's exactly the same M.O. It's Ivan Malat. He's our guy. Yes. Thank you, Detective. He wants us to go and arrest Ivan. We're both up for a commissioner's commendation. 
Anything I suggest he looks at me like I'm an idiot. You know, we keep trying to exculpate Ivan and he keeps jumping back into the frame. <sighs> well, he let the girls live. Oh, yeah, they were still his captive when he arrived at the petrol station. If one of the girls hadn't raised the alarm, who knows what Ivan would have done with them. So, he lets these two tiny women get away. We're going to say that he took out this big German bloke and his girlfriend. Well, it was 1971. Maybe he was you know, still starting out. You know, this killer, he, he's more than covering tracks. And what he did to those kids, he's enjoying himself. That's why he kills. Rod, I'm thinking we keep Royce's team focused solely on the Malats. I want to get them to work up a family tree. Girlfriends, wives, friends of the family, jobs, car regos. We cover all the bases. A leading Australian criminologist has warned that the backpacker serial killer will keep on killing. Dr. Paul Wilson says the murderer has an insatiable urge for sex and violence and won't be put off by the publicity about his victims. And we've come here today where something wicked has happened. To show the world that evil cannot have the last word. So that one day this place will be peaceful again. And its memories be put to rest. I'd like to call now for two minutes silence. This is a big international news story now. It opened on the Berlin News. I hear the Tourist Commission is concerned with the impact on travel numbers. Show some respect. Paul? It's a, it's a nice service. It was good to meet Pat and some of the other parents. Got any leads yet? Oh, he can't talk about that. We're making some headway. You find him, you promise me, Please. you call me. I want Please. five minutes Please. alone with him first. dreadful thing was not knowing. But it's not. Bigman? Who wants to know? Can Ivan never bring a gun into work? Come on, Artie, it's a simple question. You ever see Ivan bring a gun into work? He used to pack a 38. He used to keep it in the bag under the front seat of his car. I think it was an ex security gun. What was he doing with it? I don't know, I didn't ask. Why not? 
You don't ask, not with Ivan. He couldn't have done that to those kids. He's a good bloke. He's a good bloke, but he's got an unlicensed 38 under his car seat. Ivan thinks he's one of those soldier of fortune types. If the wheel turns to shit, he can look after himself. With his guns and his knives, living off the land like Rambo. You ever seen Ivan fire the gun? No. I saw him use a 22 rifle once, though. He put a silencer on it. I think he made it himself. And you think you'd be able to show us where he fired it? No, it's too long ago. Now, there is one thing he... One day he came into work. He parked next to me in the car park. He was all excited. He showed us his bullet hole on the door of his car. He reckons he was putting his guns in, and one of them went off. I thought it was a bit strange, a bit out of character, because he's always been such a careful bastard. When was that? Oh, 92. Early January 92. I suppose you remember what kind of car Ivan was driving at the time? Ivan, Robert Marco Malatz. You don't? Well, can you check again for me, please? Rose and Traffic have no record of Ivan over a Nissan four-wheel drive. There's no record of him owning a car, period. Um, thank you. Thanks for your time. I need a real drink. The search is every bit as determined behind the scenes of Australia's largest ever homicide inquiry. Around 40 police make up Task Force Air. Behind them are teams of scientific officers and intelligence analysts. These are the people. These are shooters clubs here. In front is a man regarded by his peers, sometimes grudgingly, as one of Australia's sharpest investigators, Superintendent Clive Small. Well, we're prepared for it to take as long as necessary and to follow up every lead, to do everything we possibly can to ensure that the person or persons involved are brought to justice. So you're in it for the long haul? Yes, the, the long haul. For this earlier stage of the inquiry, police have adopted what they call a bottom-up approach. They've dug into the forest of paper, the mountain of clues, looking to extract the most promising leads. Investigators are well aware that the killer is unlikely to have been always successful. Can you believe that? Malat on the whiteboard for the world to see. We had no money to catch transport back. Oh, shit. Canberra, so we decided to hitch. A man picked them up and claiming he knew a shortcut turned into bushland not far from Belanglo. There he stopped and began his attack on the young woman's friend. He said, OK, girls, which one of you wants it first? At that point, Mary showed her arms like this, and she just punched him in the face and screamed at me to run. Who the hell is she? The two women escaped into bush near here and lay hidden while the assailant drove back and forth looking for them. Now, what? Uh... Some of you may be aware that some sensitive information was made available on the ABC Four Corners program last night. I have contacted the producers. They've assured me that the Malat name will be pixelated out of all future broadcasts. This shit doesn't stink. Paul? Sir? With all due respect, I want to know how come no one bothered to tell me about the 1977 abduction attempt. How come the first time that I hear of them is when I switch on the telly? You know how many thousands of leads we got in November? They're hitching from Liverpool. He takes them to Wombie. That's Malat's country. No one think to share this information. The information was available. Yeah, on the computer, only if you punch in the names. I mean, how am I going to be across everything if nobody tells me what's going on? You don't need to be across everything. That's my job. This happened 70 years ago. I'm not sure I remember. We were sitting in the back. I only ever really got to see his eyes through the rear vision mirror. It's no pressure to pick anyone out. His eyes most closely resemble the men who attacked us. 
this fella here. Yes. It's bullshit, all right? It's time that we brought Ivan in, put some fucking heat on him. It's not gonna happen. You know how Clive wants to play this? Come on, we've got two separate cases of Ivan abducting hitchhikers in the 70s. It's too old, Paul. We can't use Therese's ID. Defence team will cut us to pieces. Why is everyone so obsessed about a possible trial? We've got to catch the guy first. It's got a lid on that car. Ivan had a register under his brother's name, Bill Millat. Hey, take it, take it easy. There's our bullet hole. Well, here we go. Pairs to paintwork, passenger side door panel, January 10, 1992. Yeah, it's not long after Gabor and Angie went missing. You think he shot at Gabor? It's a thigh height. Warning shot, maybe. You know, don't do anything stupid. You all right, love? Yeah. There you go, Artie. Get you some of beer in here. I've been meaning to tell you, some cops come to see me the other day. They were asking after you. Oh, yeah? I wanted to know about you and your guns. They haven't come to see me yet. Yeah? From that task force here, the one set up for the uh, backpack killings. What's going on? Mum's good plate, don't drop it. All right. about a hundred different ways of entering silver four-wheel drive and drawing a blank every time. I thought that this system was meant to spit out links. It doesn't even recognise Hitchhiker when I type it in. Yeah, give me a look. Now what are you doing? Athletes are always in the first dose running sheets. Thousands of ventures here. Mm. All right. Can't beat him. That's John. Got us some Chinese. Look at this. Tommy Guy called Paul Onions rang the hotline in November last year. Now, he said he was held at gunpoint while hitching somewhere on the Hume Highway near Bowral in 1990. You shot at him? Yeah, broad bloody daylight. Now, look, there was a witness, right? Some woman from Canberra. Now, she drove him to Barrel Police Station where he made his statement. So we should call Barrel Police? No, rang Barrel. They have no record of it. So this is just another prank call, man? No, 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 no. You see... Onions mentions making a statement to a Janet Nicholson. Now, she was the constable man in the desk in barrel. That part checks out. So, if this is true... If this is true, we found one that got away. Yeah, I remember it all quite vividly. Did he give you a name? He said his attacker said his name was Bill, 
that he had a moustache like that cricketer, Murph Hughes. You stole everything. You got my pack, you got my plane ticket, you got my passport. Slow down, slow down. It's okay. Do you remember anything about him? He said he was Yugoslav and, and divorced. Anything he, else? Yeah, he worked on the roads near Liverpool. Good. Uh, here, these are my initial notes as I took them down when Mr Onions first came in. What did you do after you took his statement? I circulated a description of the offender and his vehicle on police radio and then I wrote up a report. These are all good leads? Yes. A more thorough investigation, they might have had him. Yes. I suspect the indictable offences of murder, attempted murder, armed robbery, abduction and assault have been committed by Ivan Robert Millat. And I believe for the purposes of investigating these offences, the use of listening devices is necessary. In a statement given to Constable Janet Nicholson from Paul Onions concerning his attempted abduction on the 25th of January, 1990, it was recorded that during the trip from Liverpool, the offender stated his name was Bill. He worked for the RTA. He was divorced and of a Yugoslav origin with a Merv Hughes moustache. The passport photo lodged in 1989 shows Ivan as having dark brown hair and a Murphy's moustache. When taken with other information, the 1971 rape charges of Greta and Margaret, the 1977 attempted rape of Mary and Therese, the bullet hole in the door from the previously owned Ford drive. Where does this take us? I need evidence to go to a magistrate for a listening device. With all device. due respect, Mr. No, Smith. it is not going in. You keep going on and on about listening devices. How are we going to get into Ivan's house? All right, you've seen his security system, his alarms. How are we going to get them in his house? I'm just saying that right now, Ivan's probably with his brothers. Correct working. the report, resubmitted, taking out listening devices. Was there something else? Thanks, Rod. Thanks, mate. Some of the best people are difficult to manage. No, we don't want to push too hard on Ivan yet. Look, that is exactly what we should be doing, all right? That's when people make mistakes. you just got to go for it, all right, Neil? We can't sit around waiting for Ivan to call all the shots. Clive, he's a fucking pussy. Calling from Australia, I'm with Task Force Air. I'm working on the backpack and murder investigation. Hang about, I called you blokes last November. You only just getting back to me. Yeah, look, I do apologise, Paul. We have had a lot of other leads to follow up. Well, how do I know you are who you say you are? I mean, you could be anyone. I have the copy of the record of your call to the hotline. Uh, the name of the constable who took your original statement. Her name is Janet Nicholson. The name of the woman who stopped to pick you up was Joanne Berry. All right. So you have everything you need? I'm afraid your official statement's been misplaced. You're kidding me. We're going to need you to come back out here and make a formal statement in relation to the man who tried to rob you. You want me to go back to Australia? I can't. I've got a job. Look, we'll fly you out. We can cover you for the period that you're off work. Look, I don't know, mate. There's seven dead kids here, Paul. Help us put this bastard away. Onions called the hotline in November. So did Joanne Berry now. She was a woman driving the Tarago who picked him up. It's all there. The computer missed the link, I guess. This is the best lead we've had so far. Right, we need to bring this Onions bloke out. What time is it in England? I've already called him. I've told him that we'd cover him for his time off work. That, that wasn't your call to make, Detective. No, it's just doing my job, that's all. All right, Paul. Nice job, Paul. Well done, Paul. I'm thinking it's time we organise surveillance on Ivan. Right. I want him to sit way back, right? getting an inkling. So you don't want the surveillance squad to be seen? No. I'll be sure to tell. 
Rod, I mean it. Ivan cannot know we're on them. Wally. G'day, it's me, Mac. Listen, mate, I'm gonna need a hand to move some gear. Oh, yeah. What okay. gear? Here's some stuff. Where are we moving it to? Your place. When? Now. Is that all right? You know that Chalinda has never, ever seen me with a gun in my hand. Well, why don't we get it in the blocks? They can SKS in hand. Oh, mate, she's not that kind of chick. All right, so what do you guys do for, you know, you do for kicks? Well, we spend a lot of time at home, watching movies, reading. Read. Uh, novels. <laughs> fuck me. What? I read novels. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Ivan's reading. Ivan's pussy words, mate. <laughs> Go on. Shut up, will ya? <laughs> All right, boys, let's get this show on the road. AFP boys. Harris was under surveillance at the time Clark and Walters went missing. Right. And these are the latest on the surveillance team on the lap. We think he's moving gear. Well, who owns that truck? Walter, his brother. We could apply for a search warrant. No, no, what if we find nothing? We'll have shown our hand. No, we'll just wait and see what happens with the onions I do. through what happened. Oh, that's a shot. That's how he picked me up. You do know who he is, don't you? Hope he doesn't live anywhere near my hotel. You take that, wouldn't you? You guys, uh, you guys feel free to talk. Make me feel a little more comfortable if you did. Special Forces training in the Navy? I'm an engineer. Engineer? How long have you been in Australia? You meet anyone in Melbourne, are you? You look a bit tired, mate. Do you have to sleep? I'll look after the driving. Stop, stop the car, stop the car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it happened to you. Now, what are you doing, mate? Stay in the bloody car. Stay in the car. I'm just stretching legs. Hey, no, no, stay in the car! Bullets in the chamber, say it. Make copper tips. Get back in the car and put your seatbelt on. And you put out these ropes. That scared me more than the gun. All right, mate, this is carpet, mate. <laughs> Pommy bastard, you know that. I want you to go through the video slowly and see if you have any reactions to the faces. I mean, it's been a long time. You know, if I, if I can't redeem, like, you've got other stuff, right? 
There's no pressure on you, Paul, to make a decision. Yeah, I don't know about that, mate. All right, let's do it. You take as much time as you need. As you'll see, <coughs> photos are numbered from one to ten. So if you see the person who assaulted you there, if they're depicted in it, you can pick them by a number. Approach me at the news agency. Got him. You know, this happened in 1990, four years ago. Ivan had only killed two people by then. Five of those kids would still be here. squad to keep their distance. I'm not sure we can blame this on the doggies. Paul Gordon's running sheets since February. Paul Gordon? What's he got to do with it? He's been talking to Ivan's work colleagues and known associates. Your job was to obtain work records, times and dates, not talk to Ivan's work. I was following leads. Yes, well, you went well beyond your brief, detective. Now you've given Ivan weeks to start getting rid of evidence. Well, maybe if we had listening devices, we'd oh. know what he's up to. Do you actually know how to get listening devices? You've got to prove to a judge that you have no further means of investigation. We could not have done that at the time. So now, all we've got him for is armed robbery of onions. I've got no evidence to charge him with the murders, and now you, you've given Ivan the heads up. I've got even less chance it of finding It wasn't me who plastered my latch name all over the bloody telly. Well, we were playing the long game, son. I told you that. You wouldn't listen, I just would you? want to catch you this maniac. Th Is that right? Anyone in this room not want to catch this maniac? Anyone? Does anyone not want to catch him? I don't think so. Congratulations. You might have just completely stuffed this case, son. a jury beyond reasonable doubt that Ivan did the murders. We don't find direct evidence linking him to the murders. We're all screwed. Because of Paul Gordon, we're forced to move sooner. So, Neil, 
Yeah, I'll need SPG, 20 men armed with assault rifles, another 20 investigators on the ground for the search. Yep, no, you got that. Uh, now, Bob, you'll be in charge of South Team. You'll be coordinating simultaneous raids on the uh, target's family members, including Richard, Walter and William, and also the, the family shooting range in Wombie. Now, we're looking for any evidence associated with the seven backpackers, plus cartridges, guns. Uh, we also need to be mindful we are yet to locate Anya Habshoot's skull. Any questions so far? When do we go in? May 22. Two weeks? Yeah, obviously, we don't want that information getting out to the press. Royce. Royce, we want to go and pay a visit to Karen Duck, Ivan's ex-wife. Well, you two should be keeping your heads down low. That's what you should be doing. Onion's statement needs cooperation. Karen and Ivan have been estranged for years. She's not going to be telling Ivan we came knocking. I'm figuring Karen might be able to shore things up. His car, and guns, Belangelo. Dotting the I's, crossing the T's, Royce. I just want to get this bastard like anyone else. I'm not here to fuck things up. He raped me on our uh, first date, and he gave it to me up the Khyber on our wedding night. Little trick he learned inside, he reckon. Don't see you putting that in your book. Why'd you stay? He was good to my kid. Can you tell us anything about the car he was driving in 1990, the Nissan. Any detail you remember? Yeah, um, I remember he had, he had these, um, woolly seat covers. I need to ask you some details. I need some help. That's rich. You blacks weren't around when I needed you, were you? He held me prisoner in my own home. this? What's your problem, Karen? Huh? No, you don't pick up an inch of it. Stays exactly the way that it is, okay? If you move an inch, one inch of that moves before I get home, you're dead. Smile. I haven't ever taken you for a drive to Blaine Blaine. One time, put it out of its misery, Ivan. garage to the ground, you know that? Why do you do that? Because I left him. with your mate, we like it. But uh, I want it in a V8, three door. Can you do that? I can do that. And what colour was it, love? Epsom green. Epsom green. Not a problem. So we have a deal then? Oh, yeah, sure. You do the right price for me. You trade in. You've got a deal, mate. Bring your car in. I'll see you looked after. Nice doing business with you, Bill. Why did you tell him your name was Bill? Put the car in your brother's name, get a little bit of a cheaper deal on the ridge because he lives in the country. That's naughty. Okay, it's naughty. Naughty. So you happy? I love it. What's the latest surveillance report? <laughs> You're gonna love this. 
He's just put a deposit down on a brand new Land Rover Discovery worth about $50,000. What kind of man buys a car while he has half a New South Wales police on his tail? What kind of man is confident he won't be caught? Well, if you want to call this off, I mean, you'd have to wear this decision. You want to call this off? Raids will be executed on a number of properties, with the primary target being 20 Wattle Grove, Eagle Vale. Once the perimeter has been secured, the negotiator, Detective Sergeant Wayne Kingston, will make contact with the SPG in position to apprehend the suspect. Now, once the suspect and the house have been secured, the arrest team of Detectives Neil Burse and Royce Gorman will move in, followed by the search team. Where's Royce? Uh, Royce just called in sick. He's what? Uh, I know. We have to find someone to take his place on the arrest team. All right, Detective Gordon will assist Detective Burse. Uh, now, warrants have been obtained for various items, including clothing, camping equipment, cameras, ropes, ammunition, and a Ruger 1022. This building is to be searched from roof to floor. Right, every detail logged, every item recorded. All right, one more thing. There is a large media presence expected. No one is to speak to the media or say anything that may jeopardise this case. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, boss. Good. OK, everybody. Let's go. Congratulations, mate. You just made a resting officer. No, no. Clive's just looking for a patsy in case it all goes pear-shaped. Clive chose you because you deserve it. not here at the moment. Is that the premises of 20 Wattle Grove Eagle Vale? That's correct. Detective Sergeant Kingston is my name. I'm a negotiator with the State Protection Group. Now, police are around those premises. They're in possession of a search warrant to search those premises in relation to an armed robbery matter. OK. Now, I want you to come outside for the safety of yourself and whoever's in the house with you. Okay, go. Can you tell me who else is in the house with you? Yeah, just me girlfriend, mate. 
Righto, mate, you come out the door now. I'll tell you what, I'll just put me pants on first, OK? It's the police. They want us to go outside. You better get dressed, love. The police? What? Ivan, where are you going? What are you doing? Ivan, what are you doing? waiting outside the premises and have requested for yourself and Mr. Malat to leave the building? Look, no, there must be some mistake. There is no mistake, ma'am. Now, can you tell me what's going on in there? He's just trying to find his keys. He's always losing them. All right. Tell him we're going to go out now, OK? Well, we're, we're coming. We're coming out now. Down. I just want you to know it's going to be OK. and stuff. lives in this house. Yeah, it's my sister, Cheryl. She owns the place. 
you have any firearms in this house? No. Well, we've been informed that you own both handguns and rifles. Well, tell whoever told you that to come down and give them to you. Take it, Gordon. Take a look at this. He said you don't have any firearms in the house. What are these for? Ah, I forgot to tell you. I used to go out and shoot with my brother out in Buxton. Which brother? Alex. He's um, moved to Queensland now. So far, other than little bits of currency, foreign currency, we've got sweet FA. Detective first, please come to the garage. Yeah, bring him out then. This? Just there, thanks, Odd. Who owns this? I don't know. Have you ever seen any of this before? No. It appears to be a homemade silencer. And this? Never seen it before. You store anything in your roof? No. <laughs> Looks like something out of a gun. Have you ever seen this before? No. This was located in your ceiling. Have you any idea how it got there? No. Who else has been in your ceiling? Well, obviously you blokes and just the builders. What have we got? A complete breach and trigger assembly from a Ruger 1022. with the murder of seven backpackers, including two British girls. After a six-month investigation, the task force struck with raids across Sydney's southwest and the southern highlands. As Ivan Malat was being questioned, scientific police carried out a painstaking search of his Eagle Vale home, seizing a truckload of possessions. Through the night, a constant stream of police vehicles arrived at Campbelltown Police Station, bringing hundreds of items of evidence from several properties southwest of Sydney including rifles and a number of backpacks. Can you believe how much evidence we found? We're going after one or two Malats. Over 100 potential exhibits. Amazing. Clive, look, let's just go through all the evidence and then we'll see where we stand, eh? of the 
videotape if you require it. If your legal representative would like to view a copy, do you understand that? Right, so I just have to say yes to everything that you blokes say, is that it? Well, if you understand, the answer might be yes. If you don't understand, you just let me know and I'll explain it again. Yeah, no worries, mate. Do you agree we showed you certain items that were located at your premises, including a tent and parts of a rifle? Oh, yeah, you showed me things, but I don't got no clue where you got them from. Well, our conversation was recorded in Detective Gordon's notebook. Hang on, we didn't have a conversation. What conversation? Would you like me to get Detective Gordon to relay the notes in regards to our conversation? Well, I never saw him writing any notes. Did we talk together in the house? Very rarely. The suspect was shown parts that belonged to a gun that were taken from the ceiling and wall cavity. The suspect was shown those parts by Detective Burse, who says to the suspect, what's this? And the suspect then replied, it looks like something out of a gun. Shall we keep reading? Well, you can do whatever you want, can't you? Is there anything further you can tell us in regards to our inquiries to the Belangolo Forest murders? I told you already, I don't know anything about it. I don't have a clue. I've been telling you and telling you I said that from the beginning, mate. How do I know where you got the stuff from? That bloke that came in with the plastic bag and the gun parts, he was laughing his head off, mate. And I presumed because it was his own stuff because you guys planted it. He's gonna fight this all the way. He'll have to. The amount of evidence is starting to turn up. Um, we've been seeing each other for around 18 months. What about this? When was this photo taken? I'm not sure. Sometime in the last 18 months. You tell me about the top you're wearing. The jumper? Is it yours? No, it was Ivan's. That's Ivan's jumper. It might have been his sister Shirley's. But I... Ivan made you wear it. No. I was cold and Ivan lent it to me to put on. Will you still have it? The jumper. Why do you keep asking me questions about the jumper? I'm just asking you questions. He couldn't have done those things. Not Ivan. through my underwear. I told you the cops are desperate. Did they find anything with your place? No, they got worked up over a couple of ten poles, Ma, that's it. They're gonna stitch me up for that good luck to them. They got nothing. It's a fucking disgrace. Cops trying to fit us all up. I've been doing it since we were kids. Oh, we're on speed dial. Shh. I've got your tea. I don't know if you want it. Sure. 
the important thing is we're all there for Ivan. We've got to stay strong for Ivan. Place, right? That's Richards. I think that's Wally's. Well, on the news, they said they've charged someone called Milo Mila. No, 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 no. It's my lad. It's Ivan. It's Ivan Milat. He's the one who's done this. I'm telling you, it's Ivan Milat. He's the one. The, he's the one. Right? He's the one. Okay. Uh, Phil. Paul. This is uh, Phil. Phil. Phil Polglaze. G'day. Phil. How you going? Um, Paul Gordon. Yeah. Eastwood Police brought him down. Yeah, he said I should talk to you, um, task force blokes. Uh, they reckon that you want to know stuff about the, the, the Malats, yeah? So I'm, uh, I'm mates with Bodge, which is why I was sleeping at his mum's place the night that um, Ivan turned up with a knife. What kind of knife? Oh, I don't know. It was a, it was a big fuck off Bowie knife, yeah. It had blood all over it. And I said, well, you, you get a rule or something. And he goes, nah, it's, it's human blood. I, I stabbed a bloke with it. Phil, why don't you have a seat? Just tell us all about it. Take a seat. One second. Yeah. I, I, I need you guys to know that I have nothing to do with this, right? Can we get him to wear a wire? We need to know if Ivan might have said anything to other family members. I was working the show, right? So if they check me out, I mean, you know, where'd I stay that night? Well, your best best is to say nothing. Yeah, but look, look, Dick, they've got all this evidence here, right? If, if they convict Ivan, and if it happens that I am there that night, then it makes me an accessory, don't it? How can they do that unless you go up and tell them? Look, Phil, you're over panicking. There's no need to worry. Look, you ever hear of serial killers stopping? I mean, they don't stop. There'll be plenty more bodies. Well, you just take me, if you decide today, and this bloke in the four-wheel drive gets out, well, we'll just take him today. We'll just shoot him, we'll rape him, we'll do whatever we want to the prick. Earn his car, take it ourselves, drive around it for six months. And what? You think after a month we're gonna get sick of this shit? When are we gonna stop? Only when you get caught. You're not gonna stop two years before. He's talking hypothetically. It's not evidence of any kind. So, uh, where'd you get that gear, mate? You know, all the stuff that the police found at your house. You know, I've got it all over the place. You know, well, they took this backpack and other stuff and they said it was theirs. I went and bought them. You're asking the same questions the police asked me. Did really? he? You did. Did I? Think he's on to him. What's the matter, Phil? You're sweating. Come on. Here's that big fucking coat you got on. Yeah, I'm cold, mate. So what happens next? You can go home. Do you need money for the train? So what? You you send me home. Go home, mate. It's over.
Markings are an exact match. Phil Polglaze is dead. Car accident. No suspicious circumstances. You know, Ivan is so careful. He's such a control freak in every respect. I just can't believe that he would risk involving someone else in his crimes. Margaret and Greta said they were abducted by one man. Mary and Therese, one man. Paul Onions, one man. So, we're saying... One killer. Right, we've got enough to convict Malat several times over. Long way to go to trial, a lot of work to do yet. Ah, oh, come on, Clive, you cracked it. In under seven months, got to be a record. No, 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 look, it's a team effort. Uh, I've got BBC London on the phone. All right, I might take that. <laughs> Thanks, bro. What do you guys find in his home? Go away, Miss Kilmartin. I saw you with your evidence bags. What'd you get? Completely off record. Does that come fuck me smile still work with the younger cops? My, I thought we'd all be happy little Vegemites. It's not every day you catch a serial killer. So, is there something you want to tell me? by a young detective has led police to believe the Belanglo Forest backpacker murders could be linked to a rape case more than 20 years ago. Gordon pursued a theory that Liverpool, the exit point from the city for hitchhikers heading south, could be the key to the Belanglo slain's mystery. I was seen as Gordon was one of the actual guys on ground level. The trench fighters had come up with some clever lateral thinking. What Paul Gordon has come up with is not the obvious. I didn't say that. Are you denying that you spoke to Miss Kilmartin? She approached you me. She didn't speak to the media? All I said was I got lucky. So you're saying you are not the source quoted? Police say further investigations have revealed clues that while no one was convicted, a man accused of rape in the 1970s could be connected with the backpacker it murders. It doesn't mention Ivan Malat. Oh, for Christ's sake. Paul, you don't need to be Einstein to work out who you're talking about. This is why I said time and time again, you do not speak to the media. Ivan's legal team will now use this as a reason to argue that he hasn't got a hope in hell of getting a fair trial. And this lone investigator business, I mean, that is just insulting, Paul. It's insulting. Do you know how many people we have on this task force? Do you think we've just been sitting here twiddling our thumbs? You're off the task force, effective immediately. Pack your bags, get out. Now, get out. This investigation could have gone so much better. 
We got Ivan. And we wouldn't have got him without Paul Onions. And you found him. Foreman of the jury, how did the jury find the defendant on the charge of willful murder of Deborah Everest? Guilty. On the charge of willful murder of James Gibson? Guilty. On the charge of willful murder of Joanne Walters? Guilty. On the charge of willful murder of Caroline Clark? Guilty. So this is fucking bullshit! On the charge of willful murder of Anya Habshi. Guilty. On the charge of willful murder of Gabor Neugebauer. Guilty. On the charge of willful murder of Simone Schmidt. Guilty. Uh, this case was always going to be about the minutia. We didn't need hero cops, just diligent ones. Mr Small, how do you respond to Justice Hunt's remarks in his summation that there was a high probability of there being a second killer? Well, for legal reasons, I can't comment on that. Now, if you'll excuse us, uh, my team and I are going to go for a well-earned drink. It's a victory for the parents. Yeah. 